Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do a video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And uh, actually, this is a second video tonight. I apologize. I left out this very, very important news story from the first video. Uh, sometimes I get these things going, and, and I got so many news stories I want to cover, and, uh, and I always try to get a lot of scripture into the videos. And uh, the camera rolling and the clock ticking and you can get so many things going on in your mind sometimes you can kind of forget to cover something. But this one is very, very important so I need to do a second video. If you follow my channel at all, you know I'm talking all the time about the coming New World Order, the One World Government, One World Monetary System, and the One World Religion headed up by the False Prophet. In the news lately, they've been talking more and more about this war on terror, this fight against ISIS, the global coalition of nations to fight ISIS. And Pope Francis has been talking a lot about how we have to get rid of uh, religious extremists. We cannot have wars anymore based on religion. And uh, they're trying to stamp out extremism. Well, this news story here is vital to uh, how this is all going to come about. Um, and it's just very, very interesting. This is out of a Prophecy News Watch newsletter today. And it's entitled, World Army to Fight Terrorists, with a question mark. Who is going to stop ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, and other terrorist groups? The United States and its allies are starting to have a go at it, but are limited by the desire to minimize Western troop casualties and successfully evade the political booby traps along the way. Which is good news for terrorists. No major war can be fought and won using air force and other remote type offensives alone. Some troops will have to walk around the ground and use gunfire and artillery inside trenches, jungles, on building rooftops and in streets and quarters. Many of them will return home in body bags or be left disabled and psychologically traumatized in the wake of it all. The idea, this is where it gets interesting, the idea of a world anti-terrorism army that will spread out the casualties between many nations, therefore, sounds more palatable. It would minimize the number of individual country deaths, reducing the risks of political fallout, and centralize or spread out the financial costs of war. <clears throat> According to influential globalist Henry Kissinger, who was also said to be a Bilderberger kingpin, this is just the solution the world needs to overcome the terrorist threat. Now again, I want to point out, in 2009, Henry Kissinger said, we are priming Barack Obama to bring in a new world order. He's been promoting this new world order for quite some time, and he's also a member of Council on Foreign Relations, and I believe, the I'm not sure about the Club of Rome, but I think so, and the Trilateral Commission. In a recent report carried on PrisonPlanet.com, Bill O'Reilly stated on ABC News that he had interviewed Kissinger and reportedly found that Kissinger heartily endorses the idea of a world mercenary army under the guise of fighting terrorism. According to the report, Kissinger is said to be a staunch globalist, intent on pushing for the, dis dis the dissolution of sovereign nations in favor of his vision of a new world order. Even at the age of 91, he's still churning out books, openly calling for global government, a uh, sea ruled order, his latest globalist diatribe, in which he bemoans the fact that nation states still exist, suggesting that they are, they are the root cause of modern upheaval in the world. And basically, that's exactly what they're, they're promoting all around the world right now, that national sovereignty, as well as religious different religions and religious beliefs, are what's causing all the upheaval. Therefore, we need to have a one-world government and a one-world religion um, based on the, the goal of uh, the common good of humanity. And I, I've heard Barack Obama talk about the common good of humanity, and I've heard Pope Francis talk about that on several occasions. In the report, Kissinger is quoted stating that the clash between the international economy and the political institutions that ostensibly govern it also weakens the sense of common purpose there's a common purpose now. Common purpose necessary for world order. The economic system has become global, while the political structure of the world remains based on the nation state. Economic globalization, in its essence, ignores national frontiers. 
Foreign policy affirms them even as it seeks to reconcile conflicting national aims or ideals of world order. Perhaps part of Kissinger's frustration is that a ruled army already exists in the form of a UN peacekeeping force. However, it can hardly be described as a full-fledged global force. Its scope is generally limited to operation within strictly limited parameters and time frames. Hardly what is required to stop bloodthirsty and well-armed and trained terrorists who are conditioned to fight using different and advanced forms of uh, warfare, especially on the ground. <clears throat> uh, rarely has the case for the use of force been more compelling than the need to stop and then roll back the recent advances of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. ISIS, ISIS is not only a geostrategic threat, but a group that openly advocates genocide. It says the case is so compelling for an international coalition to combat ISIS that Canada should press the United States to obtain a Security Council resolution authorizing the use of force against the Islamic State extremists. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um, I cannot conceive of the UN Security Council turning down a motion to authorize military action against ISIS. <clears throat> All right. Um, the coalition against ISIS currently is is, um, is forty nations led by the United States. Um, it is entirely strange, though, that the United Nations framework is not coordinating the effort. However, taking into account the rate at which diseases such as Ebola are spreading, chances are that sooner rather than later, a global force will be required to enforce quarantine and general order. Wow. I just came across that. Let me read that again. However, taking into account the rate at which diseases such as Ebola are spreading, <clears throat> chances are that sooner rather than later a global force will be required to enforce quarantine and general order. In other words, worldwide martial law. <clears throat> this will help to ensure the spread of diseases and control of humanitarian relief efforts can be conducted safely and securely. <clears throat> the, wow. Um, <clears throat> in other words, a one world army, not just for terrorists, but to physically control everybody on planet Earth so that economic dependence can be fully enforced. Guys, if you don't see the handwriting on the wall and realize that we are <laughs> bordering on a one world government, the end of the United States of America as you know it, the end of all nations as you know it, I don't know what's going to wake you up, but the Bible makes it clear there will be this one world government. The Antichrist is about to rise. <clears throat> we have the technology for his mark of the beast. I did that in a previous video about the digital tattoos. And Pope Francis is doing everything he can to pull together all the world's religions. Not to mention the fact that the world's economy is about to collapse. And when that does, and I saw some secular uh, economists, not Bible prophecy people, secular economists talking about how when the dollar collapses and it's just a matter of time, the next step is a new world order and a one world currency. And that's exactly what the Bible said is coming. It is absolutely time to wake up. Time is so short. All the signs that Jesus said are... By the, by the way, real quickly... I just get this feeling right now, I really have a strong feeling that all of this is really going to start to really take place and really start to come together and form sometime around the first of the year, sometime around the beginning of 2015, shortly after the midterm elections right now. And I've said in the past, I'll say it again, and I know Brother Daryl, who's got a great channel, Brother Daryl, says the same thing, that Barack Hussein Obama is the last American president. <clears throat> I fully believe that. After the midterm elections, I really believe at some point he's going to suspend the Constitution. And there will not be an election in 2016. I think that's what's... I really do feel like that's going to happen, and I think it's all going to start really going down sometime around the beginning of 2015. Oh, <clears throat> not to mention the fact that General David Petraeus came out not too long ago and said that America is almost 
it's it's gonna it's no longer America is not gonna be around much longer. It is gonna become part of the North American Union. The Mexico, United States, and Canada will all be one, and it's part of a ten region uh, division of the rule that the Club of Rome came up with. A ten division uh, nation, or dividing all the nations into ten regions instead, under a one ruled government. Those days are coming so fast. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you know that you are saved. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone. He told you He's going to come back. He told us what the world would be like right before He did. And those are the days we're living in right now. We are the last generation. Today's the day of salvation if you're not saved. And keep looking up. All the signs are here. And guys, share these videos. Let's get the word out. We have got to get the word out. Hopefully, people will pay attention. People will wake up. God bless everyone.